Hello, we are discussing about GATE 2002 EC paper and the topic we are discussing is electronic devices. This is 5 mark question came in GATE 2002. So look at the circuit diagram. Each transistor in figure has a DC current gain of 50 that is beta value is 50 and cut in voltage V gamma is 0.65 volts and VBE saturation is 0.75 volts the output voltage V0 for T2 in saturation can be as high as 0.2 volts assume 0.7 volts drop across a conducting PN junction determine A the minimum value IB2 necessary to keep T2 in saturation B the maximum permissible value for the resistor RB1 C the worst case high input and worst case low input voltages for which transistor T2 will be either in saturation or in cutoff since it is a 5 mark question there will be no options for this one and we will see how to solve these problems first one the minimum value IB2 necessary to keep T2 in saturation if transistor T2 in saturation at that time IB2 minimum is can be written as IC2 by IC2 saturation by beta beta value is given as 50 and IB2 minimum we can write it as IC2 saturation by 50 IC2 saturation can be calculated by going through this diagram where V0 is nothing but VCE for T2 V0 is nothing but from collector to ground that is nothing but collector to emitter only since emitter is grounded so V0 can be written as VCE since transistor T2 in saturation this can be written as VCE saturation so V0 is equal to VCE saturation which is given as 0.2 volts so whenever the transistor is in saturation if it is maintaining 0.2 volts at that time current flowing through this transistor will be treated as IC2 saturation so IC2 saturation can be written as VCC minus VCE saturation by RC2 because the same current which is flowing in this resistor that also flows through the collector of T2 transistor so IC2 can be calculated using this resistor so VCC minus VCE2 saturation by RC2 VCC is 5 volts VCE saturation is 0.2 and RC2 is 1 kilo ohm so IC2 saturation is 4.8 milliamperes now we know the value of IC2 saturation we can calculate IB minimum by using IC2 saturation by 50 so IB2 minimum is equal to IC2 saturation by beta which is nothing but 4.8 milliamperes by 50 so you can write it as multiply and divide with 2 9.6 milliamperes by 100 so that is equal to IB2 minimum is 96 microamperes if the current flowing through T2 transistor base is 96 microamperes or greater than that one by that time definitely T2 will be in saturation second one the maximum permissible value for the resistance RB1 RB1 is nothing but the resistor connected base of T1 transistor so this is RB1 value we are going to calculate this value assume that the uh, voltage across base 1 of T1 base of T1 is nothing but VB1 VB1 is going to be calculated to be equal to 2.1 volts maximum permissible value for the resistance RB1 to keep the transistor in saturation transistor T2 in saturation so that whenever T2 in saturation at that time current flows IB2 flows that is nothing but diode will be under forward bias and the current flows through this collector bias junction current will not go into towards input side so by that time when T2 is in saturation VB1 can be written as voltage from this point to ground voltage from this point to ground can be written as this is V gamma collector bias junction this is V gamma plus diode forward voltage VD plus VBE so sum of these three things that is nothing but collector bias junction voltage which is under forward bias so that cut in voltage 
and the diode forward voltage and next transistor T2 in saturation. So V gamma of T1 plus Vd of diode D1 and Vb saturation of transistor T2. These three things summed up and it is equal to Vb1 from this point to ground. That is equal to 0.65 plus 0.7 plus 0.75 which is equal to 2.1 volts. So voltage across base of T1 transistor is at 2.1 volts and RB1 it is connected one side with one end with 5 volts the other end with 2.1 volts. Now if we know current flowing through IRB1 I, uh, current flowing through RB1 at that time we can calculate the RB1 value. So IRB1 current flowing through RB1 resistor is equal to IB the same current which is flowing through this diode so that it is treated as IB2 plus I1. I1 is nothing but current flowing through this 15 kilo ohm resistor. IRB1 minimum the minimum current flowing through this one is nothing but I1 plus IB2 minimum. I1 plus IB2 minimum. I1 can be written as VBE saturation minus of minus 2 volts divided by 15 kilo ohms. So current flowing through this resistor is nothing but VC VBE saturation minus of minus 2 volts this is divided by 15 kilo ohms. So this is a current flowing through this 15 kilo ohm resistor and current flowing through this one should be minimum is nothing but IB2 minimum. So both will be summed up and that will be the minimum current flowing through RB1 so that that is giving the maximum RB1 value. So IRB1 minimum is equal to 0 0.2 milli amperes approximately equal to 96 micro amperes plus 0.19 milli amperes that is approximately equal to 0 0.2 milli amperes and so that RB1 maximum can be written as VCC minus VB1 divided by I minimum IRB minimum so 5 minus 2.1 divided by 0 0.2 milli amperes that is equal to 14.5 kilo ohms the maximum permissible value of resistance is 14.5 kilo ohms next we need to calculate worst case high input and worst case low input voltages for the transistor either it may be in saturation or in cutoff condition first we will see what is meant by worst case high input worst case high input means that is the minimum high voltage required at input such that the output will be under low condition since it is acting as inverter it is actually a DTL gate DTL NAND gate with single input if the input is high at that time output will be low since transistor T2 is in saturation output will be treated as V0 is equal to VCE saturation that will be treated as low value that is low voltage to get T2 in saturation input must be high so the worst case input high implies nothing but the minimum high voltage you must apply at input such that T2 will be in saturation that is output will be low we know that when, when T2 is in saturation voltage across this point that is base of T1 is V gamma plus VD plus VBE2 minimum which is equal to 2.1 volts V gamma is nothing but collector base voltage cut in voltage and diode forward voltage is 0 0.7 volts and T2 saturation is nothing but VB saturation that is 0 0.75 total is 2.1 volts so base of T1 is 2.1 volts if V input is greater than or equal to 2.1 volts by that time base emitter junction gets reverse bias and collector base junction gets forward bias if the input voltage now look at this one voltage across this point is 2.1 volts if you are applying more than 2.5 volts this is NPN transistor since it is N this is P so that base emitter junction this is emitter is nothing but N type so for N type if you apply more than 2.1 volts at that time emitter base junction gets reverse biased okay by that time the collector base junction gets forward bias so that current flows in this direction current never goes into this side so 
so whenever collector bias junction is forward bias at that time diode becomes forward bias which makes the transistor into on condition so minimum input voltage you must apply sorry minimum high voltage you must apply is going to be equal to 2.1 volts or it may be greater than that one so that the emitter bias junction is under reverse bias if you apply less than this 2.1 volts emitter bias junction forward bias output will be high condition so that worst case high voltage at input is V in high is equal to 2.1 volts so minimum input voltage to be applied to get output low is 2.1 volts like this worst case low input so input is low that is nothing but output must be high voltage so what must be the maximum signal you can apply at input so that output will be at high voltage that will be treated as worst case low input worst case low input is nothing but maximum low voltage at input at which output is high that is transistor T2 must be in cutoff already we have seen VB1 is equal to 2.1 volts ok and T1 transistor is going to be drawn separately where emitter of T1 transistor which is NPN it is at V input and base is going to be at 2.1 volts collector is at C1 so now if you want to get V0 high at that time no current should be flown through this collector base entire current should go through this base emitter whenever base emitter junction is forward bias by that time entire current plus 5 from this power supply will go through this junction and no current flows through this collector to base so the transistor T2 will be in off condition so how much input voltage is required to keep emitter base junction forward bias that will be treated as worst case input so base emitter junction is going to be a simple PN junction we can write like this emitter side is N type and base side is P type emitter is connected with V input and base is connected with P side that is 2.1 volts assume base emitter junction is forward bias so that this diode is replaced with 0.7 volts so V input 0.7 volts 2.1 volts so the voltage required input voltage required to keep the diode under forward bias is going to be V input should be less than or equal to 2.1 minus 0.7 so that is equal to 1.4 volts if the input voltage is less than 1.4 volts at that time the base emitter junction is forward bias otherwise it will be reverse bias so the maximum voltage what we can apply at input to get base emitter junction forward bias is 1.4 volts so worst case low output is going to be treated as 1.4 volts if you apply more than that one base emitter junction gets reverse bias so that now V0 becomes low so worst case low input means 1.4 volts thank you